present. are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Jesus Christ overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts. So Peter said to them, I begin to see how true it is that God shows no partiality. Rather, that any person of any nationality who fears God and does what is right is acceptable to God. This is the message God has sent to the people of Israel. The good news of peace proclaimed through Jesus Christ, who is Savior of all. You yourselves know what took place throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, with the baptism John proclaimed. You know how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, and how Jesus went about doing good works and healing all who were in the grip of the devil, because God was with him. We are eyewitnesses to all that Jesus did in the countryside and in Jerusalem. Finally, Jesus was killed and hung on a tree, only to be raised by God on the third day. God allowed him to be seen not by everyone, but only by witnesses who had been chosen beforehand by God, that is, by us, who ate and drank with Christ after the resurrection from the dead. And Christ commissioned us to preach to the people and to bear witness that this is the one set apart by God as judge of the living and the dead. To Christ Jesus, all the prophets testify 
that everyone who believes has forgiveness of sins through his name. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. from Corinthians. Corinthians. Sisters and brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I've preached to you, which you receive and, and in which you stand firm. You are being saved by it at this very moment, if you hold fast to it as I preached it to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. I handed on to you, first of all, what I myself received that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, and in accordance, to the, in accordance to, with the scriptures, rose on the third day, that he was seen by Peter, then by the twelve. After that, he was seen by more than 500 sisters and brothers at once, most of whom are still alive, although some have fallen asleep. Next, he was seen by James, then by all of the apostles. Last of all, he was seen by me, as one yanked from the womb. I am the least of the apostles. In fact, because I persecuted the church of God, I do not even deserve, deserve the name. But by God's favor, I am what I am. This favor that God has given to me has not proven fruitless. Indeed, I have worked harder than all the others, not on my own, but through the grace of God. In any case, whether it be I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believed. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the people. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Early in the morning on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb. She saw that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance, so she ran off to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and told them, the rabbi has been taken from the tomb. We don't know where they have put Jesus. At that, Peter and the other disciples started out toward the tomb. They were running side by side, but then the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He didn't enter, but bent down to peer in and saw the linen wrappings lying on the ground. Then Simon Peter arrived and entered the tomb. He observed the linen wrappings on the ground and saw the piece of cloth that had covered Jesus' head lying not with the wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the disciple who had arrived first at the tomb went in. He saw and believed. As yet, they didn't understand the scripture that Jesus was to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. Meanwhile, Mary stood weeping beside the tomb. Even as she wept, she stooped to peer inside. And there she saw two angels in dazzling robes. One was seated at the head, and the other at the foot of the place where Jesus' body had lain. They asked her, Why are you weeping? She answered them, Because they have taken away my rabbi, and I don't know where they have put the body. No sooner had she said this than she turned around and caught sight of Jesus standing there, but she didn't know it was Jesus. He asked her, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? She supposed it was the gardener. So she said, please, if you know, if you're the one who carried Jesus away, tell me where you've laid the body and I will take it away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned to him and said, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus then said, Don't hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to Abba God. Rather, go to the sisters and brothers and tell them, I'm ascending to my Abba and to your Abba, my God and your God. Mary of Magdala went to the disciples. I have seen the teacher, she announced. Then she reported what the Savior had said to her the Gospel of our Savior. of all our hearts be aligned with your love, O God, our strength, our courage, our freedom, and our new life. Amen.
Happy Easter, everyone. So very good to see your bright and shining faces filling up this room. And thank you for bringing your new resurrection life energy so that we can all feast together on the power of Jesus's resurrection. I must start with a couple of uh, thanksgivings. Uh, first, I'm deeply grateful to the Flower Guild for all of the amazing flowers all over the place. Absolutely stunning. And I offer that gratitude with a lot of energy because I really screwed up on a publicity video that I made inviting everybody here. And I did it from the Flower Guild room and I talked about the Altar Guild instead of the Flower Guild. So Lord, please forgive me and Flower Guild people, please forgive me. The second word of gratitude is to my friend Avril Jones beside whom I get to sit frequently, a member of this parish. We were talking about, hmm, several weeks ago, about all of the liturgies for Holy Week and this Easter weekend. I said, you know, I would really love to have a piece of a original artwork for the cover of this Easter celebration. Who in the parish could do that? And you're so appropriate to now turn to the cover of today's liturgy. And someone said, Averill Jones is brilliant, and she just might do it. I called her immediately. I said, Averill, I know this is the 11th hour, but this is what I'm thinking. And one of my favorite hymns is Welcome Happy Morning, in which we hear, um, bloom in every meadow, leaves on every bough, speak Christ's sorrow ended, hail his triumph now. I said, so many of us go to church in nature. Could you do something from nature? She said, let me think about it. She called back two days later. She said, there's a flowering quince in my yard. And it has thorns on it, but also flowers. I said, oh, Avril, that is the perfect symbol because we know that in the Easter story, all of the times that Jesus, appe Jesus appears in his Easter presence, he always is still carrying his wounds. And we know that St. Francis of Assisi and Padre Pio, people were gifted with the stigmata. You can't have alleluia, according to Leonard Cohen, that's not a broken alleluia. How beautiful to have both the thorns but the flowering plants. So my gratitude to you, April, for this brilliant piece of art and for doing it. Now staying with my nature theme, I'm here actually to preach an Easter sermon, but to give a report from my Holy Week at the beach last week. For 25 years, I have been spending Holy Week with about 20 or 25 books by myself in solitude, total silence, at a beach house to prepare for the Holy Weekend. And um, in the middle of Lent, we had a strong, powerful, busy Lent here, and I was feeling a little droopy. And Lee Sewell, a wonderful member of the eight o'clock service of this wonderful parish came to me. I hadn't mentioned anything. She says, you know, I have a beach house and I love for people to go and use it. And sometimes clergy use it. Would you ever be interested? I said, oh Lord, the spirit has spoken through Lee Sewell. <laughs> I said, I'll take it. Well, I drove there, St. George Island, Florida. Beautiful house, just me by myself, and all of nature, including a nest full of eaglets. Two trees from the porch. Kind of like that chandelier right there. Tall, beautifully 
architecturally made in a tall pine tree. I arrived. I had been talking with my wife on the phone, and she had been crying because of the burning of Notre Dame, that beautiful place of worship. I later found out that the Al-Aqsa Mosque, where I worshiped in Jerusalem, had also been burning. And it reminded me of those three African-American Baptist churches in Louisiana who had been arsoned the week before. And I began to make a connection between that nest and those nests of worship which had been crucified and this nest of worship, St. Luke's Church. And my relationship with the nest grew, became more complicated, more jaw-droppingly off-filled. And then, the next morning at 8.30, the next three mornings at 8.30, and in the afternoons at 3.30, sharp, here came all the squawking from the nest. And the mother and father eagle came and fed those eaglets. I went to school on what might be going on because sometimes I would look at the nest and I'd say, you know, there's nothing going on there. And then all of a sudden I heard the voice of the spirit, oh, you ignorant, naive, blind person. There's stuff going on inside that nest every second. Bones are growing. Feathers are thickening. Muscles are strengthening. It's just like your nest, Ed. You can't see everything that's going on, but the gospel is going on all the time. And then I saw that the second reading for today says, you are being saved by the gospel every moment. So my friends, my Easter message to you is this. Resurrection is going on right this second inside your heart, inside your soul, inside the nest of your heart that God has built inside you. Oh, you may not feel it this morning. There may be great sadness. You may be so aware of the crucifixions that are going on in our culture right now through the injustices and the nonviolence of a society that focuses just on itself instead of our oneness, that focuses on fear and fear-mongering instead of love, that focuses on the darkness instead of the light. But I'm here to tell you, my friends, I know in my bones, I know in my life that fear cannot overcome love. Love always wins. Separateness and the myth of separateness never can overcome God's oneness, no matter how much it may threaten us. And darkness never has the power to overcome the light of the resurrection and the fact that God is lifting us up to new and eternal life right this second. It is happening inside you and your heart, your nest, right now. Can we just maintain a moment of silence? Close your eyes if you'd like. Take two or three deep, holy breaths and become aware that although you can't see everything, that God's mercy endures forever, is new for you this morning, unconditionally, no matter what you've done. The resurrection light is inside you.
thank you. Just two more points. This resurrection stuff doesn't work unless you hear it calling your name. I love the gospel appointed for today, where Mary, who had been a close, intimate follower of Jesus, later became the first preacher of the resurrection. She became a test to everybody who would follow to make sure that we understood it is important to ordain women to the priesthood and to understand that if we hadn't had that woman as the first Easter preacher, we might not have Easter. And that the way it happened is she heard Jesus call her by name. Once I was in Armenia and I was taken by an artist named Koklar. He was a contemporary of uh, Pablo Picasso, and he has a, a painting, I bought a poster of which, which helps me understand what happened when Mary couldn't recognize Jesus. It is painted with Jesus coming out of the grave and Mary looking at him, and if you go over to the side, you can't see Jesus. You can't see Jesus at all. But then you move right in front of the painting, and then you can see Jesus appearing to Mary. It all has to do with whether or not you and I live with a resurrection perspective. And that has to do with whether or not you've heard Jesus, the risen Christ, call you by name. This morning, please, during the course of our worship, let yourself hear the risen Christ call you by name. Finally, while I was studying the nest, and from time to time would come out in video, mother feeding one of the eaglets with his head just above the rim of the nest. And I recalled my favorite baptismal font I ever saw. It's 1,100 years old in Wales. And it was a huge bowl. And I just thought of the thousands and thousands of people who had been baptized in that bowl. And then I imagined that nest becoming the bowl. And then I got an email from a friend of mine named Mark Nepo. Mark had a tough bout with brain cancer. So he had to undergo therapy, chemotherapy and radiation. And then it was time to take out the reduced tumor. And the surgery was botched in such a way that Mark had to undergo more chemotherapy, more radiation, and more surgery. During that time, he was introduced to a light inside of him, which I believe was the resurrection of Jesus speaking to him. And for some grace, Mark sent me his latest poem not knowing that I would read it during an Easter sermon. Happy Easter, baby. It's all right. Happy Easter. But I pass it on as a gift to you. Think of the death that Mark went through and the new life and light he came to as I offer you this poem. Come sit with me. I know you're busy. I was busy too. Come. This won't take long. There's something I want to show you. Look. I found 
this spot of light under all my wounds. I thought it was mine, something I'd earned, but it was there long before you and I were born. Oh, please don't rush off. I know you're late, but all these appointments open like petals to the same nectar. And what if your heart and my heart are fed by the same lake? What if your heart and my heart are like a hundred-year-old cello? And that that spot of light I found is trapped inside the cello's hollow, waiting for each of us to play our song. Oh, I see you have to go. I understand. But just put your hand on my chest. It's all right. I want you to feel that spot of light. I'd give it to you, if I could, like a candle. It flickers under everything I know. My friends, I know you've got to go. I know you've got a big Easter Sunday plan. But pause in the interstices of this liturgical silence today in this room. And know and feel that there is a light inside you underneath all your wounds, calling you to new life and calling you to invite others into the nest of your heart that's so full of new and eternal life and light. Happy Easter. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Alleluia. What was dead shall live. What was dark shall sign. What was forgotten shall be remembered, for the Lord is risen and walks among us. Let us confidently bring before God the needs of all our world, asking God for renewal, 
for Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. God of life, in gratitude and great joy, we laud you for the gifts of Christ's resurrection, and we thank you for the birth of Caroline Jensen Arup, daughter of Emily and Jason Arup, and for our friends of San Pablo Parish and Camagüey, Cuba. On this day, give us hope, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. On this feast day, which brings joy to all Christian believers, may we commit ourselves to work toward the unity of the church, that Christ's body may be one, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Honoring the gift of Christ's risen body, may we rise to serve all those whose needs keep them from seeing themselves as the image of God. For Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. For all who have need of the good news of Easter, for all who journey from illness to health, from despair to hope, from grief to consolation, from loneliness to love, for all our brothers and sisters, that death may have no more power over us, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. For Harlan, Betsy, John, Joan, John, Audrey, and Bill, that they might know the healing power of Christ's love, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. May we be one in faith with all who have died in Christ, including Al Hester and those for whom the Easter flowers are dedicated. For our life is hid with Christ in God. For Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is risen indeed. For all who suffer and all who grieve, that today the Lord will wipe away all tears. For Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is risen indeed. Praise to you, God of abundant life. For when we ask, you give. When we seek, you show the way. When we knock, you answer. Praise to you for your unfailing grace and make us now your faithful people. This we ask in the name of the risen Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. It's so very good to see each of you. Thank you very much for being here. Am I turned on? Yes. Good. It was a technical question. <laughs> oh, you can't be playful on Easter. Let's start with gratitude. We thanked the Flower Guild. But I am here to testify that at before 7.30, there were sextons and altar guild and vergers and musicians and instrumentalists and all sorts of people here at work getting this room, 
this resplendent in Easter glory. Can we give them a round of applause? Yes, 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 yes. Second act of gratitude to everybody here who's a visitor. We want you to know that we do this every Sunday so you can come back and expect the same kind of festival energy. And if you are visiting for the first time, we would love to have a record of that. There are visitors cards in the pew rack in front of you. Take them please, fill one out and put them in the alms basins when they pass you by. During communion, we have healing stations back in the narthex. If you have a need for laying on of hands and prayer for healing, please do that either before or after you receive the Eucharist. Now, I'm gonna ask Melba Hughes to come and stand here. And while she's coming, I think one of the most important nests that's being built and going on is the nest of the Rector Search Committee. And Melba Hughes is now gonna come and give us a greeting She's not ready to announce the new rector, are you, Melba? Not quite. Melba, welcome. Thank you, Ed. Good morning, St. Luke's. Good morning. And I should say, and family and friends and visitors, we're so grateful for you coming and worshiping with us today. But they asked me to speak about the search committee and to speak about one important aspect of the search committee, and that is the parish survey. The parish survey, as you know, is the foundation of building a process that will get us the next rector for St. Luke's. So the people who attend with regularity, you know that since April 1st, we've been asking you to fill out the survey. And I have great news. As of last Friday, our consultants told us that they had 319 people who responded to our survey. So give yourself a round of applause. Okay, but we want more. We always want more. So please, for those of you who have responded, thank you. For those of you who was waiting for today, which was the deadline, this is what we did. We extended the survey for a couple of days, but it's only a couple of days. This stuff is prescribed by the diocese, but thanks to our awesome search committee, we were able to give you a couple more days. So here's the bottom line. If you've responded to our survey, thank you. If you haven't, there's still time. Please take the next couple of days after Easter Sunday and respond. Thank you so much. And now a word about the Easter egg hunt. Children up to third grade are invited to participate. Please meet in the circle in the park. And fourth and fifth graders will meet in the adjacent area to the Easter egg hunt also near the playground to decorate cookies. Mm. Next Sunday is Creation Care Sunday. We are going to have a special forum speaker. There's information in your bulletin. Make sure you join us. I will have to be at a conference in Southern California, but I want to invite you to go to our website where we have a Creation Care Pledge for each of us to commit to doing our part to protect this planet home. Please come to Creation Care Sunday. And speaking of great Sundays, on May 5th, we're going to have a Sunday we're calling Reunion Sunday. We're inviting absolutely every one of you here and all of your friends and everybody who's been away for a while to come back and on the 8 and the 10 o'clock service will be the two Eucharists that day. And then after that, we will have a special speaker. Barbara Brown Taylor will be our guest for a special forum that day. 
It is a day to bring all your friends and fill up your pew. We'll see you on Reunion Sunday, May 5. There are wonderful, nifty little postcards in the track racks around the church for you to take one or several to send as postcards to your friends to invite them. Finally, we have specially uh, designed Easter envelopes in the pew rack in front of you. Our operating budget depends very heavily on the generosity of those who come to worship and celebrate the new life that they experience in their hearts, in this place, and in the fresh breezes blowing in the land. So simply please help us out. Take an Easter envelope now and just transfer the contents of your purse or wallet into those post into those envelopes and then place them in the alms basins and you will be a great instrument of making this place a bright and bold beacon of God's new life in downtown Atlanta. Finally, I invite each, each, each and every one of you to communion with us today. This table belongs not to this church or to the Episcopal Church or the bishop or even Christianity. It's the table of God's love for you, whoever you are and wherever you find yourself in the journey of faith. Please join us to receive the bread and the wine made holy. Let us walk in love as Christ loves us.
us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. For in these last days you sent Jesus to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Christ you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Christ you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat this is my body which is given for you do this for the remembrance of me after supper jesus took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins whenever you drink it do this for the remembrance of me Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember Christ's death, we proclaim Christ's resurrection, we await Christ's coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Savior of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Through him we are acceptable to you, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, O Almighty God. Now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive, forgive us our, our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us.
body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The 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 body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
pray. Eternal God, you have graciously accepted us as living members of our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Savior. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us God's children through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, bestow upon you the riches of God's blessing. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Re Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever.
forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks to God.